I'm on my dough. I'm just getting know what to do. Hey, excuse me? Please. Don't come at me. Please right get out of my car right now. Don't come at me right now. I'm a cop. I get this. Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops. Today, we're exposing a case where corrupt officers are being held accountable for their actions. Don't miss out, like, share, and comment to support our mission. If you like this video, press 1. On November 15, 2022, a minor collision occurred on the highway involving two vehicles. One of the vehicle owners involved decided to flag down a passing Orlando police officer for assistance. Although the collision wasn't serious, it caused concern for the parties involved, and the vehicle owner felt it necessary to seek police involvement to ensure the situation was handled properly, potentially involving a report or clarification of responsibility. The police were called to help manage the situation and ensure traffic safety in the area where the accident took place. There's um, one person that was flagging me down for this accident who's saying she's law enforcement and she doesn't, she appears intoxicated. And there was some sort of 22. And the officer, I don't know if she uh, she could be armed. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Anything on you, guns or anything? No. Where's your actual ID? Yeah, because that one you don't need anymore. You can get rid of that. I need the other ID. Sorry. You're good. Okay. That one. Thank you. I'm going to take that back. Okay, go ahead and have a seat for me really fast. Just take a seat. Are you, you're, if you guys are good to go, if you want to, whatever you want to do. He's a f***ing jerk. Hey, I'm not, I'm talking to them. Sorry. If you're law enforcement, you know better than to be I talking to us like this. Then you know better than to be talking to us like this. Sarah Mooney appeared visibly upset as she approached the officer. When asked for her ID, she seemed to offer her police badge, possibly attempting to receive preferential treatment. However, the officer promptly corrected her, requesting her actual identification. In this situation, the officer instructed Sarah to sit down, but she continued to express her anger. Throughout this interaction, Sarah displayed clear signs of intoxication, such as unstable behavior and slurred speech. The officer likely aimed to manage the situation by asking her to sit down to ensure safety for everyone involved. However, Sarah's continued resistance might have escalated the situation further. Crash I'm at right now? Um, she's a Popka PD, but she is intoxicated. I drive for a little bit, and I feel a okay. kind of a on the on the side. She jumps out immediately and is like, "Bro, I'm a cop." I'm a like I'm a cop, but I'm like, fantastic. Okay. <laughs> I'm like I'm like okay, and I was like, "Well, you hit me," so I just jumped out and talked to this person behind me. Mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, like, did you see that?" In, do you mind pulling over and witnessing? She's like, uh, yes, by the way, she was swerving a lot. Basically, was faking a phone conversation while I'm videotaping so, her. Uh, I, need, I need to understand. I'm faking a phone conversation right now while this lady beats on my window. I just don't know what to do. Hey, excuse me? Please. please. Don't come at me. Please get out of my car right now. Don't come at me right now. I need you to go back over there. You need to get back over there. There's no reason you're inching up like that. You're good. Hey, excuse me? Obviously, like, idiots didn't lock the door, but whatever. No, you're, I mean, you don't expect someone to do it. Right now. I need you to hit my car right now. Don't come at me, ma'am. Nothing. I would ask you. Nothing. I would ask I'm you. I'm a cop. Is that, that's a driver's side? That's right here. That's yeah, right here. I would ask you to okay. this way. For my vehicle. I'm going to ask you to let's speak I just didn't know if she had a freaking gun, and I was yeah, like, no, you're good. freaking out a lot. Hit my car. Ma'am. Sir. Please. Sir. Please back away from my vehicle. Sir. I do not want this to escalate. It's escalating. My car's right there. I'm a f***ing cop. Tim at me. He's hitting my car. Well, that's true. I need you to... No, no. I need you to... Please make a way. Did she... Right there, did she touch you? Yeah. I mean, she's just pushing, pushing me. And that's why I just... I was like... Okay, oh, so she did, like touch, she did touch you and push you? Yes. Okay. And I'm just like... At, at this point, I'm like... Please move away from me. Do you have any weapons on you? 
Yeah, it's probably gonna be more than that. Listen, because she was touch, she was touching him and pushing him. Why are you doing this? Doing what? I don't want you to get hit by a car. That's the, honestly the truth. One reason. I always walk people across the street. You're on the couch. That's uh, so am I. Come here. Come on. So am I. Go ahead. Get your get your stuff out of the car, please. I'm Corporal Torres. How are you? Nice to meet you, Corporal. What's up? Hey. You want to talk to me? No, no. I said that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, really? oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, what happened with the crash? So I was coming in here and he hit me as I was coming in. Where's your damage? Uh, fuck. I don't think there's even any damage to it. Okay. Which is why I don't. Right here? I'm not sure why he called you. Okay, watch out. Can you get on the side on the yes. road? I think he hit me okay. right here. So we can go back to the sidewalk. Let's yeah. see it. You're saying so. Where were you driving from? Like, we're not driving from. Like, where were you on? From, from that way. On 408 or off the 408? Off 408. Off 408? Yep. Okay. All right. But there was... He's just being an a Oh, okay. I got it. Sarah, a relatively new officer with two years on the job, may have acted overconfidently and possibly misused her authority during an interaction with officers from another agency. The responding officer interviewed the other driver involved in the accident, who denied responsibility and cited a witness supporting their account. This witness's testimony suggests that the driver might not be at fault, according to their version of the events. In this scenario, an off-duty officer exhibited clear signs of intoxication and aggression. She forcibly opened the victim's car door without permission, threatened the driver, and invoked her authority as an officer. When the responding officer arrived and confirmed that the off-duty officer, Sarah Mooney, had physically assaulted the victim, they reviewed the evidence and then focused their attention back on Sarah Mooney. A supervising officer reviewed cell phone footage of an incident and then questioned Sarah. She pointed out the damage on the front left side of her vehicle, which showed that she had collided with another car. Eyewitnesses also supported this account. I want to let you know, though, you are at fault for this crash, okay? And you will be getting a ticket for it, for careless driving, okay? Even though he hit me, it's, it's dependent upon what everybody says, and what everyone says is that you swerved into him, okay? So if you're at fault, and I'll be giving you, I'll, you'll get a ticket. I'll be for you to stand by when me when you're done. So as far as him not being nice, how do I go about challenging him? For being nice? No, like we literally we get to met each other okay. right here. He was not the nicest person. Okay. And I feel like he's doing this because of where we're at right now. Okay. Well, it's not, I mean, he doesn't have to be nice to you. You know what I'm saying? No, I know that. Yeah, so I that. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm confused as to what you want me to do for him not being nice. I don't need you to do anything for him not being nice. Okay. But you're giving me a ticket for what? For careless driving, because you, you caused a crash. How did I cause a crash? You, your vehicle that you were driving hit another vehicle. So you're saying that I hit his vehicle? That's what our independent witness is there. I'm not, I wasn't there. Where's he the wasn't independent there. witness? They already left. We just left them. We got a sworn statement from them, and then we have them on body camera saying that what they observed. You have a sworn statement right now yes, saying that someone else said that I swerved into his white car. Yep. Okay. Okay. Right. So Sarah, so here's the deal, okay? So the crash investigation is over, okay? So while we've been interacting with you, myself, other officers, the witnesses, they've been able to smell the odor of alcohol on you, just your, your speech, your bloodshot really? eyes, your mannerisms, okay? So we have reason to believe that you might be under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. Okay. okay. So at this point in time, I am conducting a criminal DUI investigation and a battery investigation as well. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to read you your rights. I understand you know how this works. Okay. I need you, when I ask you these questions, I just need a verbal yes or no to make sure you understand what I'm explaining to you. Okay. Okay. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Sure. 
Uh, yes or no, please. Yes. Thank you. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before, during, before and during questioning. Do you understand? Yes. If you got a full lawyer and want one, one will be provided for you before questioning without charge. Do you understand? Yes. Has anyone threatened you or promised you to get you to talk to me? No. Sarah, would you mind keeping your hands out of your pockets, please? Make sure you east side, too. Anderson, Okay, Sarah. So, walk me through what happened with the crash. I understand you disagree that you didn't cause the crash. So, what what, what happened? I came off the four-way. Okay. And he hit me on the driver's side okay. of my car. Okay. Were you... You were both getting off the off-ramp? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Um, or what I, I mean, we were just driving this way. Okay. And you, why do you think he hit you and you didn't hit him? Because I was driving to my house. Okay. Where do you live? To 5332, like on Mill Road. Okay, so it's nearby here? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, where are you coming from right now? Uh, from not far from here. Not far from here? Was anyone else in the car with you? No. No? Okay. So at the time of the crash, you were driving? Yes. Okay. Now, what, what's not far from here? Wait, wait, uh, where, where exactly? Winter Park. Winter Park area? Yep. Okay. Where in Winter Park? Winter Park. Okay. I mean, Winter Park's a pretty decent-sized city. I mean, was there a specific place you were at in Winter Park? No. Winter no? Park. You were just driving around the city of Winter Park? Yep. Okay. How much have you had to drink tonight? Two glasses of wine. Two glasses of wine? Yeah. Okay. Anything else besides that? No. Okay. What kind of wine was it? Cab. A cab? Okay. Yeah. Where did you have those wines at? I asked the question and you're just looking at me. So I'm, I'm just wondering why you're asking me. Like I told you, I explained, I'm conducting a criminal DUI investigation right now. Sure. Okay, so that's why I'm asking these questions. In Winter Park. You don't want to tell me the name of the restaurant or bar you were at? It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters. I mean, does it not? Were you not coming from there? Are you conducting a criminal investigation towards me? After Sarah received a traffic violation, the officer began considering additional charges. Despite having been read her rights, Sarah did not realize she was also being investigated for DUI. This indicates a potential misunderstanding or lack of clarity regarding the seriousness of the situation, as Sarah may not have fully grasped that the investigation had escalated beyond the initial traffic violation. 8. Sarah was asked by a Florida officer if she would take a field sobriety test. Although drivers in Florida can refuse such tests, Sarah's decision to refuse led to her arrest. While in the squad car, her frustration grew as she realized the seriousness of her situation. 9. Sarah Mooney faced multiple charges including DUI with property damage, burglary of an occupied conveyance, battery, and false imprisonment. During her arrest, she was combative, cursing the officers and allegedly threatening them, and she refused a breathalyzer test, leading to a one-year driving privilege suspension. The Apopka Police Department put her on administrative leave, but she was later terminated the exact reasons for her departure are unclear. In court, she pleaded not guilty to the DUI charge, but was convicted and received a sentence of two days in jail, with credit for time served, 180 days probation, 50 hours of community service, a six-month license suspension, and was required to complete DUI counterattack and victim awareness programs. She also had to impound her vehicle for 10 days, though it appears she has not complied with this requirement. On the day of the incident, the department's Facebook page, known for mocking arrested individuals, posted only about Sarah Mooney, highlighting the department's approach to public relations. I having any point of, I mean, Is there a question in there? So while you were talking to him well, after the crash happened, all right, you're at his at his window. What was yes. going on there? Why were you yelling at him back and forth? Because he yelled at my he hit my car. Okay. 
as he hit me. Okay. Yep. Okay. And any, so when he got out of the car, what did you do? I did nothing. Okay. Did at any point you put your hands on him and put him, try to push him back in the car or, re no. or redirect him back towards the car? No. Nope. No? No. Nope. Okay. Because that's what he's saying. He, he's saying like, he tried getting out of the car. Actually, I'm, I watched the video because he had a video on his cell phone that sure. he got out. I'll take care of okay. That he got out of the car. And as he's getting out of the car, you redirect, try to redirect him back inside the car. I never touched him. No? No. Okay. Is there a reason why you think reason why he would say differently? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Why did you tell him so many times that you were a cop? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Did you think that was going to make the circumstances any different with him or anything of that nature? I didn't do anything to him. Okay. At all. I'm just wondering because Liz, listen. I didn't do anything to him. Generally, most cops no. that I know, we don't shout that we're cops to people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Okay. It was, you were just doing it in a very aggressive manner. It was kind of intimidating. You see what I'm saying? I didn't intimidate him at all. Okay. He hit my car. Okay. And that's where we're at right now. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Sure. On a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being completely sober and 10 being completely drunk, what do you think you're at? What do you mean? Not five minutes ago, you told me you had two glasses of cabaret, uh, uh, cab. So obviously you can have you, to. Can you drink, though, and still drive and not be under the legal limit? You can be point you, you, under... You can't... Okay, that's not what I asked. Eight. That's not what I asked you, though. So, so, like, one glass? Well, you said two glasses earlier, and then the original question I asked you was, on a scale of zero to ten, zero being completely sober, sure. ten being completely drunk, what do you think you're at? And your response was... I haven't drank, but that contradicts what you said earlier because you have drank today. Sure. So again, on a scale of zero to ten, zero sure. being completely sober, ten being completely drunk, what do you think you're at? Uh, maybe two glasses, maybe. Okay, so I understand you had two glasses. That's not what I'm asking you. On that scale of zero being completely sober all the way to ten being completely drunk, what do you think you're at? Again, you're asking me what I'm at. One to ten. Zero to ten, correct. Okay. Okay. So I can be at home and have a glass of wine and be out and have five glasses of wine. It just depends on who you're asking. Right? So I'm asking what you think your impairment level is, not how many glasses of wine you have drank. I can have a glass of wine right now and get home. Okay. I'll skip that question. It seems like you understand what I'm trying to explain to you. Sure. Okay. I understand what you're asking me right okay. now. Do you think you're safe to drive? Absolutely. Oops. No. No? Okay, you understand that if you don't do these field sobriety exercises, I'm going to have to make a decision of your impairment based on my interactions with you and the, the videos the witness showed me and the witness statements that were said. So okay. what are your and, witnesses? Okay. So let me finish, please. Okay. On top of that, if you do if you do refuse, that could be used against your court if you were to be arrested for DUI. So I'm just asking, what are your witnesses, him, mm -hmm. right now? I have, well, I have two witnesses, and then I have the observations of two other officers that were on scene, including myself. Okay. So I'm going to ask you again, would you want to do some field sobriety exercises? No. No? Okay, so you, and you do understand the implications. I'm going to have to make a decision based on what we've seen, heard, talked about, oh and that it could be used against you in court. Do you understand that? are going to come at me right now for what he says mm -hmm. for what he hit me okay. on my car okay. I'm not coming at you I said I'm conducting an investigation okay crash investigation was done you were determined to be at fault you have a very strong odor of alcohol in your breath your mannerisms have been what typical what an impaired driver would be okay you have bloodshot eyes all right you, you, you have not been acting how I would say a police officer should be acting especially off duty that's besides the fact. I'll see you again. Are you willing to do field sobriety exercises? No. No? Okay. You guys on your back. This one time, you're being placed under arrest for DUI and battery. Under arrest. The way you're acting is For what? Okay. For what? For DUI and um, battery. For what? Okay. Be battery on what? On the person you hit. Who? Okay. I didn't hit anyone. I didn't hit anyone. You guys are gonna 
catch it. Hit someone? Battery? For what? Let me come at you. Come or, battery for what? You're gonna take me down to, to Orange County for what? Battery on what? Battery? Yeah. Why? Because you have a fight. Because you have a FTO. There's a camera right there. Right there. That that's fine. Okay, I'm just letting you know. You're gonna you're gonna book me for battery. I didn't touch anyone at all, and I never hit anyone's car at all. Come at me, bro. Battery. Q. Hey, FTO number one, who did I batter right now as you take me down to the jail? Who did I batter? Hmm? No one. Wait till my chief hears about this. After Sarah received a traffic violation, the officer began considering additional charges. Despite having been read her rights, Sarah did not realize she was also being investigated for DUI. This indicates a potential misunderstanding or lack of clarity regarding the seriousness of the situation, as Sarah may not have fully grasped that the investigation had escalated beyond the initial traffic violation. Sarah was asked by a Florida officer if she would take a field sobriety test. Although drivers in Florida can refuse such tests, Sarah's decision to refuse led to her arrest. While in the squad car, her frustration grew as she realized the seriousness of her situation. Sarah Mooney faced multiple charges including DUI with property damage, burglary of an occupied conveyance, battery, and false imprisonment. During her arrest, she was combative, cursing the officers and allegedly threatening them, and she refused a breathalyzer test, leading to a one-year driving privilege suspension. The Apopka Police Department put her on administrative leave, but she was later terminated the exact reasons for her departure are unclear. In court, she pleaded not guilty to the DUI charge, but was convicted and received a sentence of two days in jail, with credit for time served, 180 days probation, 50 hours of community service, a six-month license suspension, and was required to complete DUI counterattack and victim awareness programs. She also had to impound her vehicle for 10 days, though it appears she has not complied with this requirement. On the day of the incident, the department's Facebook page, known for mocking arrested individuals, posted only about Sarah Mooney, highlighting the department's approach to public relations. Th Today's story comes from News Now Alabama. A few months back, while filming the aftermath of a traffic collision, Officer Blackford from the Birmingham Police Department took notice of him. After spending a considerable amount of time at the scene, Officer Blackford approached and warned him about a potential jaywalking ticket. Yes, I'm smart, so I can say it now. I can't see your face. Yes, sir. Can I, can I help you? Oscar? What's your name? Can I help you? What's your name? What is your name? I said, what's your name? I think it's, I'm going to write you a ticket for jaywalking. I need to see your license. No, that, that, that way. Someone well, you're in an intersection. Cut to the middle of the road, blocking traffic, and jaywalking. Can I see your license? I don't have any. Okay. Go back and get your car and get out of my crime scene. You have your name and your badge number, no will. My name is Officer Blackford. Blackford? What's your badge number? You see a number on there? What's your badge number? 3531. News Now Alabama, known for recording police encounters, may have drawn attention from law enforcement due to his filming activities, prompting a bolo alert. In a separate incident, while driving through traffic caused by a collision, he attempted to change lanes with his blinker on yielded to a honking driver, and then proceeded. The Alabama News Now journalist pulled over and recorded the scene, and Officer Blackford, who was involved in the previous jaywalking incident, approached to greet him. I'm going to scream to 
I know. Why were you trying to cause an accident? I didn't do anything. I saw you in the rear view mirror. No, you thought, cut in front of traffic. You thought I was going to blow the horn. Stopped. You thought I blew the no. horn. It was not me. No, the, it was the other car that blew the horn because you cut him off. No, I did not. Yes, sir, you did. I saw I've got the dash cam going. You're the idiot that screamed at me. Okay, then go pull up your dash cam. Not for you, alone. I'll do it in court. So. Why are you shaking so bad? It's not cold today. Hey, that's your go to line, you idiot. Big that ass. Officer Blackford issues a ticket to News Now Alabama for reckless driving, as outlined in 3258-190, which defines it as driving carelessly and heedlessly, displaying willful or wanton disregard for the rights or safety of individuals or property, or driving without due caution and circumspection at a speed or in a manner that could endanger any person or property. Fortunately, the dash cam footage contradicts this. If you don't have a dash cam, be sure to review my recommendations in the description. Officer Blackford now places News Now Alabama in handcuffs until Sergeant Justice arrives. Okay, now tell me again what you're doing. Your court date is May 17, 2021 at 9 a.m. Just like This is not an admission of guilt. This is a traffic citation. If you wish to uh, have uh, this further discussed in court, you're more than welcome to come to court. And the address, you have a... Are you familiar with 801 17th Street North? It's on your ticket. You can just GPS it if you want it. And your, name, your name again? I'm Sergeant Justice. Okay, Justice. Okay. This is who? Same thing it was last time you asked me. So, oh, that's for that too? Look, Edwin, I don't have a problem with what you're doing. You do. No, sir, I don't. You do. No, I do not. You're the only problem I had with you last time was to recording that lady that was on the accident who was having a bad day. That was the only problem. Like I said, this I don't have an issue with what you're doing, yes, sir. You're Oh, that's fine. 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 That's yeah, records on the way. Matter of fact, that's the problem with them right now. Quit digging at your ass in public. You think you scare people? You don't. I'm not, no, sir. No, you think it's the first I'm ticket I've got from people, thugs like you? You're mistaken. I'm You're not, a thug. I'm just not going to be intimidated by you and your camera. I'm not intimidated by you either. You don't have to be. I'm not trying to. I've explained that to you. I have no issues with what you're doing, sir. Yes, you do. No, sir, I don't. And you can say that all you want. I do not have an issue with what you're doing. Do you really think it's a little ticket bothers me? It doesn't matter if it At does. At all. That's not the point. That's got absolutely nothing to do with it. Go to work. Just get your ass out there and go to work. I am at work. No, you're not. You're sitting talking to me. Obviously, that's part of my work. You're taking up my time. The real intrigue of this video unfolds after the citation is issued, when News Now Alabama questioned the sergeant about how they determined the name to issue the citation to. Sir, we speak to you for a minute. Yeah. You don't have no retaliation? No. What? The vehicle I'm driving? Yeah. It's not in my name. Okay. The tag is not in my name. Okay. But you were driving? 
about it, right? Well, how does he know who is? It's easy. Your tag's got uh, information on it. Besides, we already looked up who you were. Nothing to do with money. That car has nothing to do with money. We already found a few more weeks. I got a picture of you on my thing. Good. I looked you up a while back ago. I hope you don't know why. Yeah, how about you have uh, the News Now Alabama? We found you from yeah, that, and then we looked you up and you came on our scene. Okay. So if you're down there, you're out. Absolutely not. Okay, again, how do you know who I am? You've come on our scenes and your tag's out. We had tagged on social with my name. Found out exactly who you were, buddy. Okay. I don't know, I can show you a picture of you. I can't, I can't remember who your name is. Actually, it says Ed McGregor. I don't know how they got it, but they found out who you were. Everybody knows we, we distributed it throughout to all the officers in there. Okay, so you, you want to see it for me to arrest me, correct? Absolutely not. You just said it. No, we're not. Thank you. No, we're not. Thank you. Yeah, you did. You just said they admitted it. We're not looking for You're a lookout for me, what you just said. No, you, you admitted it. Thank you, officer. Sergeant. Sergeant Justice, remember? Thank you for admitting it on camera. He was on the lookout for me. And nobody wants to arrest you, buddy. And at the end of the day, you got your day in court. You can go You can go fight this ticket in court. This will help out because you just said you was on the lookout for me. We have to look out for you, sir, because we think you might be a danger to us. A danger? Yeah. There's all the videos you put. To, have, you, you, have you ever done one of those? You remember the people who invaded the Capitol? You could be one of those people. No. Nope, sovereign citizen. Not me. Well, you have sovereign citizen tendencies. So, That's you. So, so what we do is we need to know who you are and stuff. You're the one but nobody's going to arrest you. Nobody's going to you so far. Oh, you think you're above the law. He thinks he's above the law. Absolutely not. You're the sovereign citizen, not me. I mean, and, and you know what? That's free opinion. It's free country. We're not, we're not China, man. You can do whatever you want. You, mean, you didn't admit he was on the lookout for me. If we were on the lookout for you, sir, we'd arrest you all the time. We need to know who you are just you in case you're dangerous. Say that again. You want to arrest me all the time? Or we what? just need to know who you are. We don't have to arrest you. But if we could, we, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to. But you would like but we to. need to know who you are just in case you do with something dangerous. But you would like to arrest me? I don't want to arrest anybody, sir. I get paid by the hour, not by the arrest. You said you'd like to arrest me all the time? No, I didn't. And you, and you know I didn't say that. Well, repeat it again, then. What I said was, if we needed to, we could, but we don't. Because we know who you are. We just need to make sure you weren't a threat. Since you're not a threat, you're a journalist. You're not a threat. Thank but I do need you to get back on the sidewalk. I need you to get back on the sidewalk, though. You need to get back on the sidewalk, sir. You're going to get back on the sidewalk, sir, because I want you to be safe. I don't want you to get hurt. What if you got hit by a car? It's not your job to protect me. Well, that's fine. I mean, I, I just I protect you out of the kindness of my heart. Haven't I? You don't protect anybody. Oh, man. I never do. Never. Never? No. Never? No. Oh, man. You just felt his bullshit. Who's bullshit? Offer to Blockford. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you felt for his bullshit? Your whole city does but a bunch of tyrants. Who's a bunch of pirates? Your whole city. The police department is tyrants. Did you say pirates or tyrants? Tyrants. T y r a n t s. But could we also be considered pirates? I can't hear you. Well, you need hearing aids then too. What'd you say? You need hearing aids. I can't hear you. I know you can. You know, believe it or not, I actually like you. I know you do. If I didn't like you, why would I subscribe to your news site? But if you like me, you'd have come up and told him to back off. Uh, no, I can't tell him to back off. That's officer discretion. Yeah. officer discretion. See, he didn't have to write you a ticket. He could have given you a warning. That's his discretion, not mine. Do that. We don't have to give warnings. We do, because sometimes it's in our best interest. But I, seriously, but I am. I do follow your thing. Okay. And, uh, and you know, you got a loyal fan base. And, you know, I don't, I don't really have anything against you. And you'd be surprised. Sometimes I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, so he, you but again, that, but you said he, he could have some of the stuff. He could have, he could have given me a warning, correct? Anybody can give you. I can give you a warning all the time. Okay, and his reason for not giving me a warning is what? Because of who I am? Doesn't matter. He might not give warnings. I could. I could give you a warning. Listen, the difference in us and communist China is a free and healthy news. They call it the fourth estate. That's the difference between us and, like, tyranny. So, when I say I literally dig some of the stuff you do, I'm not kidding. Okay. So, well, you have a tyrant. You have a tyrant working for you there. That, that's your opinion. I mean, I, I, I can't. 
They not pass. He gave me a ticket in retaliation. It's not retaliation. It is retaliation. He admitted it. If, if you broke, if you broke the law, you broke the law. What are your thoughts on this case? The following video was sent in by Open Government Investigations. I featured his video several times before, but for those who might be new, he specializes in educating his audience about laws and their implications for both citizens and public officials who are bound by oath to enforce them. His channel is a treasure trove of information on the FOIA process as well. On September 20th, 2021, OGI was filming in the employee parking lot of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. He noticed there were no signs indicating restricted access to the area. Parking. And there's no signs. He commenced recording non-moving violations of personal and agency vehicles when Colonel Ura arrived on the scene and requested to have a word with him, addressing him by name after checking his information following a recent interaction. Yeah. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, absolutely. I'll get out. Oh, okay. How are you? I'm doing all right. Yourself? Mr. Carroll, right? Yes. Mr. Ura? Yeah. Can I get your ID number? 4344. Okay. It's Colonel Ura, by Colonel, the way. Oh, sorry. I don't uh, know. No, not that it makes any difference. Yeah. But here's here's where we're at, okay? Um, nobody's going to um, jump on you or tackle you or do any of that kind of stuff and on all that kind of stuff while walking around. But here's the problem that we've created is, for instance, um, you just took a picture of that car, okay? Yes. That's a personally owned car. That's yes. not a that's not a sheriff's office car yeah. and all that kind of stuff. No, yeah, I'll let you go. So that's not a sheriff's office car. That's not a car that's bought with county funds or county kind of resources and things like that, or taxpayer monies and things. The sub yes. So the issue is when you... Am I blocking somebody? Um, no, no, the no issue is, he was watching me. No, no, the issue is, so so when you when we start mixing the, you know, county owned property and taxpayer type of property and then people who have some expectation of privacy because it's their own cars and things mm -hmm. like that then we kind of you know we're, we're causing issues okay, okay. And, and we yeah. finish we also have instead of things like district 5 and things like that where it's a full like lobby and things where you can come in and we've got law enforcement officers that are used to that kind of stuff. The other end of this is you've got civilians. We have thousands of the civilian employees at the Absolutely. County Sheriff's Office. Yeah. And they're not really, they don't know what to do with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They Absolutely. see all this and they go, oh my gosh, this guy could be dangerous because he's got a tack vest on and things like that. Yeah. So they don't know that there there are, you know, you have a, what you believe to be a platform for this First Amendment auditing. That's what the thing, I'm not a First Amendment auditor. Oh, what are you? What do you want? I'm a journalist. Um, okay. So actually, the reason why I'm doing this, yeah. um, so it's really interesting. You made a comment about nobody's gonna jump out and try and jump me or anything like that. Yeah. So the other night you had two lieutenants mm -hmm. who were very ill-versed in the law, mm -hmm. uh, claimed that I was loitering and prowling, threatening me with arrest for simply walking through a public parking lot. Okay, so you're a journalist or again, there you- I was paid well, to go well, on assignment. Ill, Ill, you're paid, you're paid, I'm, you're paid employed. I am. By what? By Root, by Reuters or AP that. or all that kind of stuff? Or? No, but it is a, uh, there is a firm out of South Florida that does pay me. Okay. So you're a paid freelance journalist? Correct. For lack of a better term. And so they pay you to walk, or walk around the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office and see what? All around what? the state, actually. Okay. Now, in the past, have you, uh, have you used the 911 system to call on yourself? The colonel has just made his primary intentions clear. What initially appeared to be a consensual conversation has now revealed itself to be an investigation aimed at criminalizing OG's actions. It is wise to stop answering questions at this moment. However, Ogie knows he hasn't broken any laws and, in the interest of documenting encounters like this for educational purposes, he continues to answer the colonel's questions. The 911 system to call on yourself? No. So you've never called a dispatch and said, hey, there's a person who's walking with a tactical vest who may be armed? No, why would you waste a 911 call and commit I a felony? I agree. That's why I'm, I'm asking you that question. Yeah. So, so you've never done that? No. Okay. So you're paid called non-emergency numbers and not okay. called on myself, but I've called to ask questions, yes. If that's what you're wondering. You've asked questions about yourself being there? No, about agency operations. Okay. All right. Because you, so. you understand the issue with that, that if you call, you, you tie up resources to, to kind of alert law enforcement of yourself in order to elicit a response from us. Yeah. Well, you know first I mean? of all, that's 
poor journalism. Uh, um, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, secondly, um, actually, hello again. Okay. So, kind of touch topic about what you were saying. Gotcha. You see that tag right there? Yeah, I do. That's public record. Well, I can go right now to the Department of, or sorry, Florida Department of Motor Vehicles, and I can say, hey, I would like a copy of the registration for 14 Alpha Charlie Yankee Sierra. Okay. And they would give me all the information, provided that there's no exceptions to it under Florida Statute 119. Mm -hmm. Me simply taking a picture, and I understand you talk about, you know, reasonable expectation of privacy. Mm -hmm. Are we in public? Listen. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be. Listen. Yeah, I'm not trying to be but rude. Listen, I, I do appreciate. It's not my first day. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely not. So you're not going to wind me up into some sort of no, well, illicit some listen. response. In Florida, VIN numbers and license plate numbers are indeed public records, allowing access to ownership history details and the ability to check if the tag is registered to a different vehicle or search for liens. While it's legal to look up a vehicle's owner by plate number, there are concerns if the information is misused, such as for stalking or harassment. Pause, 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 pause. Well, just tell me what you want. I'm going so through and I'm documenting be, traffic go, infractions. This is gonna, you're documenting traffic infractions? Absolutely. That's a trap. Your doc, what traffic infraction do we have? You see this right here? Uh huh. Do you know what Florida statute says about that? Okay. It, yeah, no, it's not okay. See, the thing is, I've actually been to court over it because okay. not one of you guys, but a different agency decided they because were going to the try plate, and. But you're saying because the, the, the plate does not display the entire plate? Yes. Okay. Which is a violation of Florida so statute 316. Your, your sole purpose here today is to take pictures of plate covers because. Of how many agency owned vehicles well, and, agency owned vehicle. and or private vehicles that are in public lots that are either utilized or owned by and law enforcement agencies. you're being paid by a firm in South Florida to do this? Absolutely. Okay. How long do you think, I mean, is this research of yours going to last weeks, months, years? Honestly, it depends on how far it goes. On how far what goes? Uh, your, see, the thing is, research. I specialize in investigations, uh -huh. so it kind of depends on how you guys handle the situation. How we handle the situation? Absolutely. What situation are we going to handle? So, like right now, we're trying to have civil discourse. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have civil. Absolutely. As long as it stays civil like this, yeah, yeah. then I don't have to really investigate much. Okay. So, so you're going to. So, is your plan then to do this until you find somebody who's not civil? No. I just want to know. You're no, the thing is, so, eventually, so, 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 maybe, just, so maybe, maybe you have a. For, maybe eventually, you're okay. going to find a deputy who, who, is going to get mad at you. If we do this day after day after day, they're gonna potentially. They're, yeah, there's okay. a, there's so always is that a, there's the always game? no. Is absolutely not. Somebody's gonna get mad at you. No, in fact, actually, I was just commenting on how, or I told you earlier. You know, I respected the fact that you were very professional, very courteous. The irony seems to escape the colonel, as the most prominent law enforcement activities involve officers stationed day after day writing traffic violation citations. If the colonel's assumption is that consistently documenting non-moving violations of public servants will provoke their anger, perhaps some self-reflection is warranted. The purpose of documentation is transparency and ensuring equal opportunity rather than equal outcome. When there are rules for some but not others regarding such minor infractions, it raises questions about the extent of these discrepancies. First time meeting you, and I think actually, is it that guy? Is that the guy that was over there at the other district office? It's either that one or he's over there because he's been following me around. Yeah. But no, in fact, actually I go, maybe you have the wrong impression of me. I go into these interactions looking for the positivity of law enforcement. I don't go in looking for issues. Do you really? Yeah, I really do. Um, do you have a blog or a, a YouTube channel or something yeah, like that? Uh, it's under Open, open Government Investigations. Okay. Um, but a lot of my stuff is also pandered through a couple or one, two news agencies. Okay. So. Okay. okay, so today, what can we do to help you? So we can maybe not have all this attention and things like that. I mean, that. you guys want to help Trust me? They're, they're no, I, I get they're it. They're here because I'm, uh, me, I not you. I you didn't attract all this attention, no, no. I get it. That's fine. Okay. And then generally, I don't know about your guys' policy, but usually policies where somebody steps out with a 13 Papa, that potentially, you know, especially like right now, you don't have a body cam. She does, she, he does. Some agencies do require that whenever certain circumstances are happening and law enforcement does, you know, have to show up somewhere that if you guys do have body cams, generally somebody has to either have a body cam or an in-car camera running. Yeah. So I'm not sure about your guys' policies, but I've found that to be the case in a lot of the agencies that do implement both body and in-car cameras. have a body cam exemption. Yeah. Okay. Probably working on an undercover capacity. Or, yeah, something like that. More or less. So, <laughs> um, so today, 
because we're just going to try to get by this one day at a time. Absolutely. Uh, what, do, what, do, what do you want to do? Where do you want to? Um, because how long? Like, how long we have to do this? Today was just going to be these two. And that these was it. two parking lots was what you were in. Or these here. two. Well, it's kind of hard. I and mean, you guys have a lot of buildings around here, but mm -hmm. generally these two areas of property. So these two areas, you're going to take pictures of traffic and or uh, traffic infections for and statistics. Yes. Because of for statistics on the on the covered tags. Yes. Covered tags, expired tags, etc. So. I found, yeah, I found a few. Okay. Well, you know that the governor's, you know, there's exemptions to the, the expired taxes of COVID and stuff too. I'm sure yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because I want to be fair to you. Yeah. You're getting pretty close to some areas that are restricted. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm making sure not to go into restricted areas. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to, I know, like you said earlier, it's not your first day. It's definitely not my first day. I've been doing this for seven years. So, I mean, done this all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, and again, my, my job is not to get under your guys' skin. It's just, you keep making that face, man. I'm trying well, to have because a because I think that's exactly what your job is. But that's not my job. I mean, I'm a, you're, you're allowed to say opinions, and so am I. Yeah, well, I mean, your, the thing is, what I'm saying is, is not an opinion. Is it's to it's antagonize well, I mean, technically, into a into a confrontation. But that's not I'm what I'm trying to do. You're not going to get it here, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to do that, though. Okay. I mean, the thing is, is I mean, technically, you could say it is an opinion, but it was an opinion that was set up by the 11th and 8th district Supreme Court. Which gives me a right to do this. So I mean, it's completely no, lawful. It's my opinion, what your end goal is, is to yeah. try to yeah. try to get. You know, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, it makes it better for your channel. And opinions things. are like apples; everyone has them. So I mean, I could make an opinion about you, but you know, it's fine. I can make an opinion about him or her. Or her. Okay. But so today you're gonna what? Do this parking lot, that parking lot, and then and then where else do you intend to go? Uh, it depends. I'm still okay. waiting on a call. Okay. Still so. waiting on a call from the South Florida firm. No. Thank you. Thank you. And can I get your ID number? I already gave it to you. It's be on your camera. No, you said, I think you said only your name. No, I said 4344. Four, four. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. And then you already got yours. Can I get the other two, please? Can I get your name and ID, please? Gordon. Gordon. And then ID number? 9261. Thank you very much. And yours? Rivera, four, three, six, four, Thank you guys very much. Thank you for your professionalism. Have a wonderful day. This time the encounter concludes without incident, allowing Ogi to resume his documentation. However, not all his interactions unfold in such a tranquil manner. To delve deeper into Ogi's unwavering focus on his work and to gain insight into VOIA requests and government transparency, one must explore further. Our last story comes from a viewer who prefers to stay anonymous, and for the sake of this video, we'll call him Joe. In September 2012, Joe declined to consent to a search of his vehicle at a Border Patrol interior checkpoint. Officer Hoyt detained Joe for over an hour. Joe lodged a complaint against the officer, but it wasn't upheld. Then, a little over a year later, Officer Hoyt spotted Joe at another checkpoint. He trailed Joe for about five miles before pulling him over. Joe hadn't broken any traffic laws and chose to record the encounter for his own safety. Oh, All right. This car is this. Excuse me? Whose car is this? Am I detained or free to go? I'm asking you whose car is this? I'm asking you if I'm detained or free to go. And I'm asking you whose car is this? If I'm not detained, I'm gonna leave. No, you are. Oh, I am detained? Okay. Then I can't answer any questions without an attorney. I'm asking whose car is this? I can't answer any questions without an attorney present. Right. Can I get an ID? Can't answer any questions or cooperate in any way without an attorney present. Why did you pull me over? I need an ID. You need your ID or your name and date of birth. Not answering any questions or cooperating. You're not going to cooperate? Nope. You're not have DPS come out here? Have whoever you want do whatever you want. I need name and date of birth. I'm not giving you anything. You have no reason to pull me over. What's your name? G. Hoyt? Oh. I remember you from last time. Do you have an ID on you? You're just digging yourself a, a deeper hole. So you do whatever you want. Because you had no reason to pull me over. I don't have to give you anything. Asking you to identify yourself. I already told you. You got your answer. Do whatever you need to do with it. Joe declines to disclose his identity to the officer, who in turn fails to provide a valid explanation for the traffic stop, let alone a justification for Joe relinquishing his privacy rights and surrendering his documents. Officer Hoyt returns to inform Joe that additional units will be arriving, but still refuses to offer a legitimate reason for the stop.
closer. DPS is en route, it's gonna be a little while. So you're gonna be detained until they get here. Unless you want to cooperate. Why'd you pull me over? Unless you want to cooperate. You don't want to tell me why you pulled me over? I'm asking you for your name. Tell me why you pulled me over. You don't want to identify yourself. That's fine. You you pull me over to check my name? Is that legal for you to do that? You don't want You pulled me over to ask me my name. I'm asking you right now for your name. Why did you pull me over? You don't want to give me your name. If you don't want to answer me why you pulled me over. DPS will be out here. Whatever, dude. Fucking retard. Additional officers arrive at the scene and ask for identification, including Captain Sturgeon, who tells Joe that they will use a canine to inspect his vehicle for illegal immigrants and narcotics. What's going on, sir? Am I turning your vehicle off? No, I'm not turning your vehicle off. You turn your vehicle off and hand it to Okay. Now we got another border patrol vehicle. What's the problem, sir? Why don't you want to tell us who you are? If you just give us your ID, we'll check it and then you'll be on your way. Sir, we're going to do an immigration and uh, narcotics check on your vehicle. You want to take your keys out, stop your car? Okay, fine. You can get your canine. So you know, sir, I'm going to do a canine slip around your vehicle. Sturgeon. What's your name, sir? Why do you want to know my name, sir? You have to identify you yourself. Don't tell me your name. What's your name? So you're refusing? Okay, he's refusing. You got the doggy. Now the dog's not going to alert on sh and they know it. Oh, he's got the big guns out. Wow, he's got a. He's this dude's got a fucking rifle out. Holy sh**. <laughs> wow. They're serious. Wow. They put some stop sticks in front of my vehicle right here. And now he's got the dog out gonna sniff the air around the vehicle and he's got a rifle out and he chambered around you heard it we all know that there's nothing whatsoever illegal in the vehicle now he's coming to do a canine sniff and we all know how accurate these dogs are The dog's not going to alert to anything, and they know it. But they'll say that he does in order to get me out. Yep. See? Nothing. But they're going to say that he alerted in order to get me out of the vehicle. Been here, done that. Once again, no alert. No alert until he tells the dog to sit down. But there's no alert, and he knows it. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The dog finds nothing, and approximately three minutes later, Captain Sturgeon returns, but this time he's without his name tag. All right, sir. We're done with our inspection. Thank you. Am I still detained or am I free to go? You're free to go. You want to say hi to anybody on YouTube or anything? No, thanks. All right. Here's another compelling instance highlighting the importance of consistently recording your interactions with law enforcement. Based on our assessment, this entire incident appears to have been unlawful, constituting a severe infringement on Joe's right to unrestricted travel and his Fourth Amendment protections. Joe remains baffled as to the reason for the stop, raising suspicions of potential retaliation for lodging a complaint against the officer a year earlier. Thanks for watching. If you found this video insightful, give us a thumbs up and share it with others who need to see it. Don't forget to leave a comment below and subscribe to US Corrupt Cops for more updates on corruption in law enforcement. Stay tuned 
and stay informed.